interview with the devil. Would you want to have a sit down with Lucifer, hear his hidden secrets and plans and policies? Well, the Bible reveals us a lot of things about this creature that's causing all this evil and has demons under him, has a well-structured kingdom. And today we're going to watch a video of a interview with Lucifer. But first of all, I want to mention that the devil is our foe, but we shouldn't be afraid of him. The reason why we shouldn't be afraid of him is because even though he is mighty, he's not almighty. Even though he is wise and knowing, he is not omniscient, meaning he's not all-knowing. Even though he's powerful, he's not all-powerful. Even though he is created by God, but he is not God. He is not present everywhere. He is on the chain and can only really go as far as God allows or permits. There's a verse in Job chapter 1 verse 7. The Lord said to Satan, Where did you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. This tells us that the devil has to move from one place to another. He's not present everywhere. The second thing is that the devil can be resisted by Christians. In James chapter 4, verse 7, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. As powerful as he is, as smart as he is, he can't stand against Christians. But there is a warning that we must heed. As the Bible tells us that Christians shouldn't give place to the devil. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, Nor give place to the devil. Now, how can Christians give place to the devil? And I'm going to look at about six or seven things that Satan uses to attack Christians. But before we do that, let's watch this interview with Lucifer. This comes from Ivan the Evangelist YouTube channel and I pinned the link in the description. Let's watch. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to agreeing to this interview because I know you are a very, very busy person. Yes. I usually like to fly under the radar, but I figured since I'm already on the campaign trail, why not? Okay. First, let's talk about your reign. Now, you've had a fairly long one. What would you attribute to your success and popularity? Oh, that's easy. Every generation is the same. I appeal to their lust and ego. I offer all the sex, wealth, and fame a person could want. Do as thou wilt has been my campaign slogan from the start. And my campaign platform hasn't changed either. I run on the same three issues every generation. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Okay, okay. When you say lust of the flesh, what exactly do you mean? Come on now, what do I mean? Isn't it obvious? I just use humans' own innate physical desires against them. And since sexual desire seems to be the most powerful, I usually run with that. Now, I didn't create sex, but I must say I've done a superb job at perverting it. Take pornography, for example. Well, you should know a lot about this one, Ivan. Weren't you addicted to porn? <coughs> um. This interview is about you, uh, not about me. Can we get back on subject? <clears throat> <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yeah. What I do is gradually get someone addicted to porn. And once Lust has had his full work and he and she can no longer restrain themselves, they usually look to act out their fantasies on someone. And sometimes that someone is a child. Now, if my plan plays out perfectly. That abused child will eventually turn to a life of promiscuity and perversion themselves, allowing me to continue my vicious cycle. And here's the kicker. Many of those abused girls end up right in the porn industry. Now, how's that for irony? Mm. The second thing you had mentioned, I believe, you said lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. Can you elaborate? Humans are never satisfied. You always crave more. Bigger house, bigger car, more money, more power. The list goes on and on. I just take their natural ambitious desire, pervert it, and use it against them for their own destruction. My plan is to allow them to never be content. As long as I can keep them craving what others have, I can depend on them to argue, fight, even kill to get it. 
<laughs> Humans are so easily tricked into jealousy. And you know what they say. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Yes, I have heard that before. The last thing you had mentioned was, I believe, pride of life. Now, how does this fit into your campaign platform? Humans are always on a quest for knowledge. I trick the first humans to seek carnal knowledge over godly wisdom. And it's worked like a charm every generation since. With more knowledge comes more pride. And you know pride is my specialty. And since humans don't like to keep God in their wisdom, I'm able to seduce them with all types of things to help puff up their ego. Lately, fame has been my biggest seller. Who doesn't like attention and feeling more important than the next person? Once I make them famous, I can really use them to promote my agenda. With their help, I've convinced half of the world to not only accept sin, but to celebrate it. Do you know what has been my most enjoyable pride campaign to date? No, what? Well, my gay pride campaign, of course. Not only do I get the chance to promote your own self-destruction, I get to use God's logo, the rainbow, to do it. Love is love, right? <laughs> my plan not only prevents you worthless humans from reproducing, it distorts the gender roles and allow me to bring all types of chaos and confusion upon your pathetic societies. This has been so successful, I've got men convinced they're women. And women convince they're men. And some convince they're no gender at all. And I've got two more Pride Initiative campaigns I'd like to introduce in the near future. Hmm. Really? I'm guessing you probably want me to ask you what they are, right? Well, first, it's abortion pride. Now, I think we can pull this off. Society is definitely ready for it. I've enlisted to help a Planned Parenthood to work with marketing and promotions. And all we'll have to do it silenced the so-called abolitionists and pro-lifers because the rest of the church doesn't seem to care. And second is pedophilia pride. Now, society might not be ready for this one just yet, so we'll hold off. I need to desensitize them a little more before we introduce it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Let's change gears for a minute and talk about policy. Some may consider your policies destructive, Dangerous even. Now, this is going to get a little bit offensive material, but I want you to listen with an open heart. Response to that, what would you say to your detractors? All of my policies are aimed to do one of three things. Either steal, kill, or destroy. And if it's not doing one or all three of those things, then it's not in my agenda, and I'm not promoting it. Okay, okay. I'm happy you said that. It seems as if you promote your agenda differently to different, to different ethnicities. Uh, if so, why? He's going for the of race one. I'd be a fool not to. Take black people, for instance. As a people, they're super spiritual. So I can't really convince them that there is no God. What I have been able to do as of late it's convincing that he's not the God of the Bible. Now, I've been real successful at promoting black consciousness and Islam in their communities. I'm so happy you mentioned black people. It seems as if we've been at the very top of your agenda for quite some time. Why is that? A few reasons. Black people helped me reach the masses. Now, as you know, I was over music in heaven. My beats were so dope, I got over a third of the angels to follow me. And once I got here to the earth, I needed artists and entertainers to help me promote my message here. Who better than black people? Black people possess all the natural rhythm and music ability that I need. And it's easy for me to influence them with money since so many of them grew up without it. Another reason I target black people is because they're strong mentally and physically. If black men were to ever find their identity in Christ, I'd be in trouble. So I try my best to destroy the black family structure and keep black men away from his family and the church. Drugs and incarceration are a couple of my more popular means. Without the head of the household present, I can become the head and influence the children without too much resistance. So you mean to tell me that your policies are intentionally racist against black people? Racist? <laughs> this has got to be the best lie I've 
ever come up with. Now, I can't believe that humans still believe they're different races. But to answer your question, yes. It has always been my policy to target and isolate a group of people. And out of all my strategies, <laughs> this skin color thing has worked the best. I definitely want to keep white people and black people separated. As long as I can keep black people bitter and white people offended, I'm good. Hopefully black people will never forgive. That way I can continue to use them. Okay, what, my question is, what role, if any, does your administration play in this black on black crime epidemic? <laughs> well, as great as my administration is, we can't take all the credit for this. Black people help us tremendously. By aborting so many of their babies, they allow us to bring death to their communities. As the Bible says, they sow the wind and they reap a whirlwind. Mm. When implementing all of these policies, do you ever face any resistance or pushback? And if so, from who? One group in particular try to oppose every policy I try to implement. I would be so much further along in my agenda if it wasn't for them. Really? So what group is that? Those pesky, born again, Jesus followers. They're a real thorn in my side. Every generation they come together and try to dismantle one of my signature policies. Now I've convinced half of the world that Jesus didn't exist and the other half that he wasn't divine. But I can't seem to convince them. They seem hell bent on telling everybody about him and spreading his message. Some of me believe he's coming to unseat me in this generation. <laughs> Crazy, huh? I'll tell you, those idiots are really messing with my legacy. So, Lucifer, how does that make you feel when uh, us idiots say that Jesus possibly could be coming back in this generation to unseat you? Huh. Y'all been saying that for centuries. I just use it as motivation to get as much of my agenda pushed through and deceive as many people as possible before he returns. I think I've done pretty well. My record speaks for itself. About 150,000 people die each day, and most of them don't know Jesus. 150,000 people. Whew. Well, you know what? This concludes our interview. Wow. Pretty chilling and a bit shocking, but it's not unscriptural. We see that the devil does use means to attack people. And I'm just going to share a few of them. Number one is temptation. We see he tempted our Savior. He tempted Adam and Eve. And temptation is not sin, but temptation can lead to sin. Temptation is really an enticement to sin. God tests, Satan tempts. The second thing that he uses to push his agenda is sin. Satan cannot work without sin. And with sin, he's able to push his agenda. The third one is deception. One of the strongest policies of Satan is deception. He deceives, he tricks people, he has a counterfeit things. For everything that God creates, he twists with deception. That's why a culture falls prey to that because it, sometimes it looks like that, like water and alcohol. They look alike from a distance, but they're not the same. And so our culture calls it love is love, but in reality, it's not true. God is love, but love is not God. Satan deceives people. He deceives nations. And one day he's going to try to actually deceive the whole world. The fourth thing that he uses, and this is more against Christians, is accusation. He accuses us to God and he actually tries to accuse God to us. He wants to make seem like God isn't good. God isn't faithful. God can't be trusted. The fifth thing that the devil uses is affliction. He wants to afflict believers. He wants to afflict them with disease. He wants to afflict them with mental issues. He wants to afflict them with financial pri problems. He wants to cause pain and harass them. And why? It's so that they will curse God. What happened to Job? He wants the same thing to happen to us so that we could be tempted to give up on God and to curse God in our pain. The sixth thing 
that Satan does or uses part of his policy is opposition. He seeks to oppose the work of God. He seeks to oppose the church of God. He seeks to oppose the spreading of the gospel. And sometimes you feel the resistance in your Christian life. It's like something is someone is opposing me. And he does that through demons, through principalities. He does that by affecting and sometimes using our circumstances. And we should not be oblivious and we should not be ignorant that we are living in the spiritual world with spiritual enemies and they have practical and real targets and the target is us. And the last thing that the enemy uses is death. That's one of his signatures is death. But the amazing part about Jesus is that he defeated Satan. He defeated the devil and he defeated death. And the Bible gives us these beautiful scriptures in which we take courage in these last days as we see the world under the sway of Satan, as we see the devil being the ruler and the prince of the air, though he's defeated, but yet he still remains in control. Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him, speaking of Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. You want to overcome Satan? It's the blood of Jesus. It's the Word of God. It's your testimony. It's not loving your life till death. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. I want to challenge you today. Make the devil homeless, meaning don't give him place in your mind. Don't give him place in your life. Resist him. Keep on doing God's work. Don't fall prey to greed, pride, and lust. Don't fall into His temptation. Don't believe His accusation. Resist His opposition. And we will see the kingdom of Jesus Christ one day when Jesus comes be established on this earth and the devil will be bound, thrown into the lake of fire with his demons. But we will reign together with our Savior Jesus Christ. If you're excited about that, drop number one in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. Until next time, 